Hey everyone, our latest Trade of Black podcast. We're in Miami Beach at the Benzenga Conference with some of the biggest cannabis executives in the country. We're finding out what exactly is going on, what does this all mean right now, and most importantly, where this industry is going to grow in these challenging times in the economy. There's some interesting stuff that we learned. All this and more in our latest Trade of Black podcast. Right, Shad Dales from the Dales Report, and I am happy to be in beautiful weather, Miami Beach, Florida, for Benzenga, and I'm happy to be joined with Zappy Zaplin, psychedelic concierge. Good to see you again, yes. finally in person. How are things, my man? Oh, amazing! This Miami, you know, winding up being the epicenter of the psychedelic industry, yeah, the crypto industry, future of finance, it's the future of finance, right here. It's the amount of people that have moved here from California and New York since COVID, uh, it's a very lucrative market. Are you finding? Yeah, no, the quality of employees and staff and things has just gone up with all of the California people, the Northeast people coming down here. Yeah. Uh, just even their expectation of quality of food and things, it's raised the bar Food's for everybody. Right and it's just, it's fantastic. The concern with food even too, obviously we focus on a little bit of the plant-based industry. That looks to be like an emerging industry as well. But um, the world is changing at a rapid pace, is it not? Yes. I'm excited. You know, I, I have a newsletter called Palm Beach Special Ops yep. where I talk about uh, psychedelics, plant-based lab-grown meat, frequency medicine, all of these things that used to be sort of like fringe and now they're they're they, they're the saving grace of society. Yeah. So it's super yeah. exciting to see this happening. Well, a lot of people know you for the, those that don't. You're a successful filmmaker. Obviously, we're close with uh, Lamar Odom and his recovery to happiness in life. Um, we look at this psychedelic industry right now and last time we saw each other was actually back in November, which is, you know, five months ago. Where does time go? Um, this industry is definitely from a capital markets, public, uh, publicly traded companies um, landscape has definitely shrunk and there's a lot of mergers and acquisitions. Um, a lot of investors are concerned with the direction of the company. Let's face it, this industry, if it was private, it would be Mardi Gras right mm -hmm. now with the developments and the growth that's actually happening. But for if you were an investor walking into this industry, What's your take on it right now? Because I know a person like you thinks we're just getting started in this industry and there's tremendous growth, both short term and long term. Do you not think? Yeah. No, I think, you know, as much as I love this industry a year ago, I love it even more now. Why because, is that? Well, the science that's come out even in the last six months since you and I were speaking, yeah. it's like... These are major university studies. These are, you know, they're not like anymore. They used to be like 20 people in a study. Now these are hundreds, thousands of people. Uh, yeah. So it's just gotten better, the fundamentals. The entire biotech and bioscience uh, landscape of public companies, that's down 50%. And those are, you know, companies that, that people much? know the name. Yeah. Wow. Because you're talking about psychedelics kind of being lumped in with the bioscience yep. and so people just go all right well that's down at least 50 percent and i don't know this company and it's speculative so yeah it's down 80 mm percent -hmm. but the reality is these are the pharma companies this is like buying a pharma company in the 1920s biotech company in the 1990s and when the science just keeps coming out better and better it's kind of like when the internet bubble bursts and everybody was like throwing everything out i was like wait a minute I'm using email, I'm shopping online, this internet's not going anywhere. Yeah. So I just yeah. kind of gravitated to the, the best of breed and those companies are now the Amazons, the Ebays yeah. and everything yeah. else. So. Well, let's face it, it's challenging times globally right now, which actually makes it more, I think, promising for this industry long term. You know, unfortunate war going on in the Ukraine, the market has been very volatile for the better course of a year now. Biotech, as you said, um, that industry has taken a, a big hit uh, over the past year to 18 months. However, if we do see a rebound, I think we'll definitely see a strong rebound in this space. 
and where a lot of that data that has been produced over the last year or so will really come to fruition, do you not think? Yeah, no, I think that's, that's what it is. And, and, you know, when you say the war, I think, oh, my God, all these millions of people, they're getting PTSD right yeah, now. Yeah, I know. We have ketamine. We could give these people ketamine. It's very cost effective. And we could disintermediate all that PTSD mm-hmm. that you just got. Mm-hmm. Like, these are the things that solve all the issues that we're having as a society. Addiction, depression, you know, uh, every, you know, the, the, the planet. So, you know, these are really the holy grail of mental health. And so to be sitting here with you, you know, let's say we're sitting here, you know, three years from now, yeah. you're going to be going to the pharmacy, grabbing your psilocybin. Can you microdose. believe that in three yeah. years? Yeah. What does it look like in three years then? Um, ketamine is going to be widespread, uh, you I know, agree. veterans, uh, everybody, you know, addiction, all that kind of stuff. I think ibogaine is going to be legalized because of the breakthrough status of ibogaine to yeah. break dep- uh, addiction. Psilocybin will have breakthrough status, and I think microdosing in three years will be kind of what maybe CBD is right yeah. now. It's so a lot of people. Last week, Numinous one of a big merger and acquisition with Novamind, and I was speaking with CEO Peyton Nyquist, and he was telling me like one of the main reasons was their uh, footprint in the state of Utah, which a Republican-run state, and it's very much like that's not a, that doesn't give you the sign of the times, like how right. things have changed. Um, it's pretty eye-opening when you look at a state of Utah and how much they're really, you know, considering and open to the idea of the research related to psychedelics. But Peyton was telling me that they actually went down to get a tour of one of the clinics and they wanted to take a picture. They couldn't get in there for nine hours because of the amount of people that were lined up outside of the clinic all day wow. long. So as I hear that right now and I hear what you're saying within three years, so when people hear about, you know, for they're still learning about psilocybin, ketamine, ibogaine. Do we see a big expansion of clinics across the U.S.? Is this where it's going? You know, I I don't think the clinics is exactly the place to go. I actually have a company called KetaMD that's an at-home ketamine treatment company. And the reason that we went with the at-home model was post-pandemic, people don't want to go sit in a doctor's office, have people breathe on them. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. You have to be driven to and from the clinic. You have to go during office hours. It's very inconvenient unless you have a lot of money and you can take days off and spend thousands of dollars. With the at-home ketamine treatments, you get to have it at night in your own place. Nobody has to drive you. And it's like, this is what's happening for, you know, every industry is transforming based on what you know, public opinion is and what, what the tolerance of the consumer is. I don't think people want to go into clinics and sit there during an office hour. It's a bad business model. So I anticipate a lot of those folks are going to come over to the at home because at the end of the day... So how does that work then? Like the emergency of telehealth, you're taking something from home. How do you know how much to take? Obviously the prescri- prescription is going to outline that, but how do you prevent being at home anything like a reverse reaction happening? Yeah. Like what's that? How Good does question. that... What we're doing is we're having people guided by nurses over telemed, and we've already trained 60 nurses. We have 300 more in the pipeline, but we've trained 60 nurses. Yeah, they've had at least two treatments. That is so overlooked, isn't it? The proper research and qualifications and people learning. There's not enough talk about that, I find. Yeah, and the nurses, you know, they're generally, they're empathetic and they're well-trained. We have them, You basically you speak with the doctor over telemed, they approve you, we send one lozenge to your house that melts under mm-hmm. your tongue, and then you schedule a session guided by the nurse, they look at your set and setting, they make sure everything's good, you have a buddy in your house who the nurse can communicate with yep. if they need to, and you have this one hour session with the nurse, we play you our frequency based soundtrack, they watch you at the end, they help you integrate the experience, and. You know, telemed is probably the best thing that happened yeah. because of uh, COVID, and in mental health, it's a must. So when you add ketamine plus empathetic person who knows what they're doing, you can do ten years of therapy in like one at uh, one it's hour. Incredible! Session. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Yeah. Well, it's I awesome. shouldn't say crazy. It's it's awesome, as you said, right? You're here in Miami. You're at the Benzenga Conference. For those that don't know, that you're very well respected within this community. Um, do you talk? to a lot of companies within the industry? Do they ask and reach out to you, CEOs, about your knowledge, expertise, advice, direction, anything like that? If you could maybe share that with my audience. Yeah, no, I do get a lot of uh, communications from CEOs in the space. 
uh, related to everything from valuation to acquisition, uh, different you know advisors and celebrities and things that maybe they're trying yeah. to bring in. Smart. I uh, I have a company called Psychoceutical. Yeah. We have uh, some patented delivery systems that work in pharma that we've licensed for the psychedelic industry. Mm -hmm. And what's exciting about that is that. Uh, we're not competitive with any of the other psychedelic companies, so we can deliver whatever their drug is. So if they're mind med and they have 18 MC and they're uh, they're clear to use it, the problem is dosing. How do they dose it? Everybody's mm. different. Well, with our technology, we can put it into a nanoparticle and we can change the shape of it so it uptakes much better and targeted. So basically, we get to deliver any drug safer and more effective. So we've been talking to everybody from a Thai, Compass, Field Trip, Cybin, to do what I call coopetition. Mm. And I think because we're not fighting a zero-sum game like some of those other guys, we want to work with everybody. We know we can, we've can. we just solved the dosing problem for the whole industry, and yeah. for us to be able to work with everybody, that's critical for us. Outside of the data, when you look at these companies, let's let's keep things on a positive note where, what do you like about what a lot of companies are doing within the industry? And I know it's a broad question, mm -hmm. but is it just come right down to the, the whole initiative of the research? But is there more than just that that can be people like, you know, optimistic about, you know, the overall development from a business standpoint related to the industry? Yeah, I mean, what I like is that some of these first generation folks who came in and they tried to, you know, they saw the land grab and they were, saw the green rush and they were like, oh, I'll just start a psychedelic company, I'll take it public, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, those people have now shifted out and there's some very professional management and CEOs coming in. The companies that don't really have anything or anything concrete, they're being acquired. Mm -hmm. So I think the level of management yeah. is just going up. Um, the regulatory, you know, my company, Psychoceutical, we've met with the NIH and the uh, NIDA, the drug um, addiction group of the government. And uh, these guys are very eager to get some of these replacements into the market because they know that the antidepressants and things like that, they're not And working. it's global. I was speaking to someone from the UK this morning, even government officials there. Portugal, obviously, decriminalizing drugs. Like, there are a lot of countries and government officials that are very much on board with the overall study and direction of this industry. Another reason I wanted to bring you on, your nonprofit organization, Mind Army. Yes. Um, great initiative, as I said, obviously, you are viewed upon as... Uh, one of the true pillars within the industry. So let's learn a little bit more about this nonprofit and what your whole objective of it, it is. Sure, yeah. The Mind Army, our slogan is fighting for the right to pursue happiness. Okay. And that is your most inalienable right. And so it doesn't make sense that you can, you know, we, we as human beings, we could discover the West, we could go to outer space, but somehow we're not allowed to go inside our own mind. That doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. And so the Mind Army is dedicated to legalization of psychedelics but we put together a dream team of lawyers that includes Dustin Robinson Courtney Barnes Tom and Jeff Zuber David Feldman like the top lawyers in this industry mm -hmm. and we are collectively we're writing a petition to the DEA to ask them to look at the most recent research and to agree to regular rescheduling meetings because we haven't had a rescheduling yeah. meeting in 55 years so it's like we want regular five years. Yeah. It's, what? <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. I know. So the Mind Army is going to, number one, bring the, the action, but we're yeah. also going to reinforce it with celebrity and culture and put a lot of social pressure on the, the politicians. So if somebody wants to check out mindarmy.org and be part of this revolution, because we will get these things rescheduled quicker than they would be and ultimately that's good for every company in the space and I think you know I've gotten a lot of interest from the companies themselves who've said hey can we support the mind army because if if you get rescheduling happens it just helps yeah. all of our business yeah 100% are you looking to make more film related to the industry um I you know I have another film coming out that is uh touches on this industry yeah. but it's a movie called it's called the frequency movie mm. and it's called uh the future of everything being frequency and it uh features dr joe dispenza um greg braden bruce lipton some real luminaries and it's all about how frequency 
is going to be everything. It's going to be your medicine is going to be frequency based. They're going to give you certain frequencies to eliminate virus. Yep. Um, the last time I had you on, the one thing that you brought up, it was uh, what was that term you used? Singularity. Yes. And yes. where we're going to be and say, not even in 20... 2045. So what was the idea that you were saying? Like, Because Elon Musk is kind of doing it now with these nodes that actually make your brain that much. Yes. So you think that'll be a mass audience thing? Well, yeah, that, you know, that's the next generation of the metaverse. Once everybody's kind of in the metaverse, then the next uh, idea. And like you said, Elon Musk is already on it where they're implanting directly the brain. But they say in the year 2045, you will be connected to the internet in your brain with the entire internet with AI running calculations for you on it. So Isn't that crazy? Yeah, Ray Kurzweil says in 2045 when you have that singularity, the average person will be one billion times more intelligent than you are today. I, I actually, when I hear that, first thing comes to mind, that's a little scary to think, you know, yep. a little overwhelming. I think that's unrealistic, but then I actually speak to younger generations and I see like, for example, my daughter who's eight, nine years old and she's with eight or nine of her friends and they're all communicating through a community and buying real estate through the metaverse on Roblox. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, fast forward that even 20 years and what they grew up on and what's normal to them. Well, this, this Where are we is going to be. Yeah. This is what's normal, right? Well, the, like you said, it's, what, I, what I'm trying to get the message out, the mind army is saying is. This is scary because in 2045, if you're a billion times more intelligent than you are right now, if you get pissed off, you could just say, oh, I'm going to destroy Miami today. And you would have that capability. So how do we, you know, stop a teenage kid whose girlfriend breaks up with him from like destroying everything? It's like we have to raise consciousness and we got to do it now. The only way I've ever seen somebody get instantly more empathy is a psychedelic experience or a near death experience but that's pretty hard to find. So when you can raise your consciousness and your empathy through these psychedelic compounds, that means that if we have enough people at a raised consciousness, then we can handle that level of technology. We can't wait till 2044 and go, right. oh shit, what are we gonna yeah. do now? Um, wow, I so we have to get way. to this right now and that's why I'm out here stomping and saying, hey, critical mass of psychedelics let's get to this we need as many people who are suffering in mental health to have access to psilocybin you know all these different disruptors it's always fascinating talking to you awesome likewise yeah keep good in touch questions. thanks right. happy brilliant hey everyone thanks for watching we appreciate you giving this video a thumbs up we also value your feedback so leave a comment below and if you like what we do then share this video on your socials and don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel and tap on that bell to receive notifications for all future videos that we post thanks for watching